Hello everyone, today we are going to go over um, circle packing, which is um, some new functionality we've incorporated in Para 3D 4.0. Um, first thing I'll, uh, I'll start with is uh, our basic geometry. I'll use a cylinder for um, this tutorial. Um, so I don't need all these um, these divisions in the um, the z-axis. So I will go up to uh, my modify tab, um, and the, with the height segments, I can just right click, and then I'll reduce everything to one. I will also um, just make these whole numbers um, just to make things a little bit easier. Um, and then I will also need. Um, to create a reference point. So um, I'll just go to create, go to here to a helper, and then um, a point. And this is going to be used uh, for the circle packing reference point. So everything is going to pack around a reference point. I will be using um, this point as my reference. And these are the two elements you're going to need to um, to get started with uh, circle packing in Pair 3D. OK, so since we have um, our two elements, I'll just uh, select cylinder. And then we'll create um, our array. I'm going to keep this uh, as a copy as opposed to an instance, um, mainly because I'd like to have um, a variation in uh, the radii that I'm creating in um, my circle packing. So I'll keep that as a copy, so it'll give me a little bit more flexibility. The array count is up to you. I'll make it um, 30. Um, and then I will take off the, um, the keep original. Um, Okay, so um, now I have my cylinder in para, and I'm just going to go through and start labeling these things just so I can stay a bit more organized. So this is my uh, my cylinder. So this is my initial geometry. So I'll keep that labeled cylinder. I'm going to need to expand the options, <coughs> and the first thing I'll need to do is um, highlight the position. I'm going to drag out our first controller. This is going to be a link controller. Um, and this will be um, tied to our reference point. So I'll just come up here and rename this ref point. Um, and this is going to be functioning as an external link. Um, so we will highlight that option. Uh, we'll pick an object under the external link options. Go into our scene. Select the point. Um, here is the point. We'll expand the options. Um, we're interested in the position. So I just expanded from point to transform to position. I'll select position and then hit OK. So if we were to update, you see that the cylinder is now inherently tied to um, the point, which is great because this is going to be used for our packing. So when we animate or when we um, when we activate our uh, our circle packing, everything is going to be moved towards this central point, which is uh, which is really useful. Okay, so now we need to add a, uh, a transform controller, uh, which is basically going to be this is going to be our starting point. But we need to move um, we need to move uh, all of our thirty cylinders, which are now sitting on top of our um, our reference point now, into a series of directions. So um, we'll go up here to the link controller. Um, I will add a transform controller, and this is going to function um, as a sort of move option. Uh, I'm going to attempt to preserve my current controller as subcontroller, which is going to make this apparent to my reference point. So, um, so this is my transform controller, which I will uh, relabel really quickly. Transform, which is essentially just going to be our our move uh, our move node. So um, now, since it's uh, since we need to um, now move the 30 cylinders we have sitting on top of each other, we'd like to move those in only the x and the y direction. So in our our move um, or our transform uh, controller, we want to pull out uh, a new controller, and this is going to be a random controller. We're not super concerned about where they're moving; we just want them to move randomly and then. Uh, pack as sort of uh, efficiently as possible. So um, I'll highlight this, select a uh, rename as random x. Okay, so now I have my random x. I can um, go back to my move. Um, since we um, since we have a, uh, a controller here, I can just click on random x, drag it down to y, um, keep it as a copy, select OK. I'll, I'll probably want to rename this 
to random y. And um, since they have uh, common properties, I can select both of them at the same time. And then I'll need to uh, select the range. And the range is just um, related to um, the, the amount of movement in the x and y directions. So um, I'll make this, uh, I'll make the minimum at negative uh, 100 and the maximum at, uh, at 100. So I can go ahead and um, update that and you'll see that um, I have a, a minimum and maximum to my range. If I, if I update continuously, you'll see that it's, it's constantly updating. For the uh, purposes of circle packing, I'm going to want to go to pattern and use pattern. And what this is going to do is it's going to um, update once more, but it's going to lock it in. So it's essentially using um, this latest update as a pattern, uh, which is something that you're going to need um, when you use the circle packing function. Yeah, if, if you'd like to change uh, the pattern that you've, you've sort of locked in, you can always just update through randomized pattern. And if you were to go and update, you'd have that locked in as well. So um, that's uh, really useful. This is a, a really important point um, to make sure that this, um, this option is highlighted. OK, so um, as I mentioned before, I wanted to um, to have uh, a sort of a packing that had a series of different radii. So um, I'll go into uh, my cylinder node. I'll look for the radius. Uh, I'll drag out a controller. And I'm also just going to use a, a random controller as well. So uh, double click to add. Highlight and select. So this is going to be, I'll just label this radius. And then from here, I can adjust the uh, the minimum and maximum range. Um, except for now, it's going to be dealing with uh, radii as opposed to position. So um, I'll make this. I'll make the the minimum five, and we'll say the uh, the maximum is uh, fifteen. So I'll update. Um, and in the, the same way that the the random controller worked for position, I also want to use a pattern. So um, I can continually update this until I find something that I like. Highlight use pattern, it'll update once more, and now I'm sort of locked in um, with the x and y position, but also the the, uh, the radius or radii of the um, the array as well. Okay, now we're going to need to introduce the um, the actual packing. So um, we'll double click on the um, the canvas, and we'll add the packing controller. So we'll need to add, the well, first thing I'll do is label this packing. OK, so since the packing is then going to be the, uh, the parent of uh, my transform and the rest of this pair flow, um, we can simply double click on the transform, slide everything to make space for our packing, which is going to then slide in here. Uh, double click, and that'll uh, expand it, which just makes things a little uh, easier to move. Um, we'll go into our packing um, node and then highlight that. And then the, um, okay, so since we um, now have our packing inside our pair flow, we're going to, we have to now select the type of packing we're interested in. For, uh, for this tutorial, we are interested in circle packing. We will do a, a rectangle packing in another tutorial. Um, also, since um, we, need to, we need to specify the type of packing algorithm we're interested in, we are going to use simple packing um, for, for this tutorial, but there's also gravity packing as well. So um, the difference between uh, simple packing and gravity packing, um, for simple packing, we're using a, a central node, which we've specified um, through our helper. And all the, um, all the sort of uh, the uh, members of the array are going to be moving towards that central node. Um, they'll all sort of shift in um, together and then kind of shuffle until the um, until the packing is is then optimized. Whereas gra gravity packing actually functions um, where all the the elements um, have their own sort of separate gravity force and things are pulled in um, based on those discrete numbers as opposed to having a central node. Um, like a simple packing, for instance. Okay, so in order for um, in order for us to uh, sort of commit the changes of a uh, of our packing controller, we're going to need to satisfy three criteria. So we're going to need um, we're going to need to satisfy initial position, radius, and packing center. So um, 
the uh, the transform or the move um, controller is going to function as our initial position. Um, for our radius, we're going to need to make a uh, a link controller. Um, and then we're going to use a, an internal link. So we're going to need to pick a track, expand cylinder, go down to the object properties, and then highlight radius. So this is going to function um, as our as our radius, and we can let that radius two. Okay, and finally we're going to use our packing center, which we've already defined as our reference point. So um, we can just take this uh, and connect this back to the packing center, right? This is the um, the reference point we established um, before we even open Para. Um, okay. Okay, so before we run the um, the packing option, I'm just going to go over a few of the um, the last. Uh, the last options. Um, the distance um, uh, actually functions as the distance between the members within your array. So you can specify that here. Damping um, refers to the speed in which um, all the members within the array um, head towards your reference point. So if this number were low, like let's just say uh, 0 0.05, um, you wouldn't need to use auto damping. Auto damping essentially um, takes it'll take your initial value so for if I kept it at the default of one um, where, uh, where where these objects were moving closer to the uh, the sort of central node um, they would slow down automatically so this is a, a really important thing to have if your initial value is high um, and this uh, this is used in conjunction with uh, either run one step or run multiple steps so for the purposes of this uh, tutorial I'll just uh, reduce the number uh, manually on auto damping uh, I could have just kept that at the default, used auto damping, and then updated. Uh, run one step will show um, essentially the 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 scenes of an animation step by step. Um, I'll use multiple steps in an iteration of ten, which essentially means ten scenes. So I would have to hit run one step ten times um, to get the the tenth iteration. Uh, but uh, I can I can also specify that number. So I can update here. And you can kind of see that auto packing, and it's slowly sort of optimizing. Um, with each click, I'm I'm updating ten times. Okay, so I can also um, animate these results if uh, if I wanted to, as opposed to um, showing that manually. Um, I can just go to um, add-ons, and then go to oh, sorry the the plus tab add-ons, and then go to the keyframe maker. Um, the keyframe maker is going to be the last node in the pair flow as we are moving right to left. Um, and we are going to uh, highlight, we're going to go, uh, we're going to um, connect the cylinder to the keyframe maker. Um, and this is going to function as our animation. There are a few um, options that we need to go through before this works. We are only interested in animating the position. So the um, the sort of motion of packing is what we're going to be highlighting with our keyframe maker as opposed to uh, the radius. Um, the duration will have start frame at zero. Uh, the end frame is going to be at 100. Um, that refers to um, the timeline down here in, uh, in max. We can specify the number of keyframes or the time gap. Um, the higher this number, the uh, the more frames you'll have in your scene. I will just make this 20. I will go to um, okay. So um, now my animation is set. I'll need to um, go back to my packing node, um, uh, reset, and then update. So now I'll have um, my sort of initial geometry of the uh, of the array. Go back to the animation, um, and I'll generate my keyframe from here. Give it a second to load, and then um, I can minimize uh, para, zoom in on my packing, and then hit play. And then you have the uh, the sort of animated packing. Okay, so um, if you have any questions or comments, please post them in the uh, the comments below. And also, we will uh, be posting the uh, the paraflow associated uh, with this video on our website as well. So um, feel free to download and give it a try for yourself. Thanks for watching.